Okay. Christy, it's shocking that mm -hmm. we are being told that the agri sector is doing well. It's shocking. Because I have, just this year, I have seen as many as 10 letters from different secondary schools threatening to close down the management of the school just because they can't get food supply to feed school children. Now, if, if our food production is doing so well, why are we not even to, able to feed our school children? And let no, nobody tell me that that's a disconnection between the buffer stock company that's supposed to supply food stock to the schools to feed the children and the agri sector that produces them. So, for me, we, have, we are in a serious crisis of food shortage. Because see, for the first time in our history, we have to approach ECOWAS to take food stock. You are aware? You see, I'm asking you, you are aware. And so, if the program of planting for food and jobs is doing well, why are we taking grains from Mercos? So, it's not correct. Again, if we are doing so well, and, and the components of food crops that they're planting for food and jobs is supposed to tackle and expand and ensure that there's, there's abundant productivity in those food crop production includes tomatoes this year it's meant that we are importing as much as 400 million dollars worth of tomatoes from Burkina Faso alone Burkina Faso which, which lies in the Sahelian region is producing tomatoes and we are buying from them that much. Don't be hoodwinked by uh, some conveyance of plantain from some farms nearby to Accra to suggest that that is an evidence of the success of planting for food and jobs. Because it has been made that plantain wasn't one of the food crops that we included in the planting for food and jobs uh, program we were told that they will build warehouses we were told that they will build dams in in nearly every district so that they will become a source of irrigation for farmers you see it's not happening initially the impression was created that every constituency is going to get that then they changed the policy and said that it will be done in the, in the northern region. Even in the northern region, the dams are not surviving. Evidence abounds. Your own, your own media house have gone around to bring some footages of dams that have either dried up or collapsed as a result of um, the, the dam overflowing its, 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 its reservoir. So the dams were not constructed to stand... I mean, to be durable. They are not durable dams. That is to serve the needs of the people. Again, we were told that farmers have been assisted with fertilizer so that they can increase crop production. This year, it emerged, not for me, but from the ministry, that fertilizers were being smuggled across the border on donkey bags. It emerged. I didn't say it became topical. It was, was a headline news. In fact, initially it was attributable to the minister. But he came to say that, no, he didn't say it, but it was one of his directors. All the figures they bandied about in the budget. How do you say, for instance, that paragraph 515, that under the planting for food and jobs since 2017, it has yielded 800 kilograms per hectare. That has improved mm -hmm. from that to 25 kilograms per hectare, respectively. And yet we can't get maize to buy. How is that possible? We've been told in paragraph 521, for instance, that the ministry had distributed 120,000 layer bears 
2,000 female poultry farmers in Sisala East, Krachi East, Nandong, in Kuranza, in Kwanta South, Sanerigu, Savelugu, Techman North, and one municipal. Chris, do you know how many municipalities with districts and, uh, and districts do we have? 260. If you assist farmers from nine districts, that is a drop in the ocean. How do we trumpet this as a success story? I was hoping that every single this district will have a land bank for this project. Because we, we've sunk serious public funds into these ag ag agro-based programs. So that, for instance, in South Dine, I was hoping that government would say, get about 50 acres or 100 acres of land. Allot it to persons, farmers who register. Let's say two acres, three acres per farmer. Young graduates. Because the idea of the planting for food and jobs, when it was initially mooted in parliament, and the policy program adopted, was not to, to as it were, help existing farmers. That was my impression. It was to now encourage young graduates because it was supposed to be a source of employment. It was to cushion young graduates who were interested in going to farming. So that the farmer numbers will increase from the existing number of, say, 100 to, say, 200. The, the, the 100 being new graduates who are interested. But it appears that we've only gone back to existing farmers, assisted them with a token and trumpeted the program. It's just now that government says that if you go to the, the draft statement that the minister came to read in parliament, paragraph, paragraph 73 and um, of the Obatampa program, page 22. Mm. It says in, in, in part, Mr. Speaker, the high food prices and pressures on, on the local currency validates the current focus of the Ghana Cares program to bolster the productive and export capacity of the private sector. To this end, an economic enclave pro project with focus on providing support for the cultivation of up to 110 acres of land in the greater Accra, Ashanti, Central, Savannah, and Oti regions is being pursued. Because see, we have 16 regions. So if government is minded to do this, do this in all the regions. Don't leave any region out. So that when we are looking for 110 acres of land in, say, in the Volta region, Volta region, we have 18 constituencies. We can then divide this by the 18 constituencies and say that South Dine, you look for 10 acres out of this or even 8 acres out of this. Then we can focus so that when you get to South Dine, you can there's an area you can see that this is where the government intervention is taking place. As we speak, there's, there's nothing like that. Let's start on fishing. Our fish stock is dwindling as a result of petroleum and light fishing, even on the water like light fishing is taking place. There's no policy intervention. There's a whole economy on the water lake, including my constituents in South Dine, from Germany, Agadake, Atoklopo, Tongo, Chita, Abui, Beve, Akwatu, all the way. These are my, my, my communities along the water lake. Mm -hmm right from Ajibu and uh, Jakiti. These people, the, the, fish, the fisher folks in these areas, can't get premix. And do you know the reasons the minister came to give us in parliament a week before the budget was read? That the BDCs don't have the products to mix, to produce premix. And, and, her, and her statement is that efforts are being made. What sort of efforts? So if you don't have premix to travel and to, do, uh, to, to, to undertake any economic activity on the lake, including farming, uh, fishing, and commercial traveling, because, because we have a chick in Ketepa, Adoso, Akate, Germany, um, Wando Toko, Ketekrachi, Yeji, uh, 
all these to us all these communities have huge market centers that our people travel to to engage in commercial activities and trading in livestock and food stocks if they don't have the premix they are compelled to buy super which is being sold at an atrocious prices and yet we are trumpeting that the, the agri sector is doing well the cocoa sector it's wise you had to listen to senior rico poku yesterday on the floor the statistics are not encouraging so we see i won't sit here and say that all is well in the agri sector the minister himself says it here that the high food prices and pressures on the local currency if we have high food if we are producing food in abundance why why are they being sold to us at high prices so we have we have issues we, we should be able to align our policies well I, and, and i like what government want to do with the land banks but it shouldn't be limited to these five regions it should be extended to all the regions and and 100 acres of land in a region is too small you can get 100 acres of land in a district and of course for instance in the water region if you ask every district to produce 100 acres of land you are going to get about 200,000 acres of land and that will be good that will be good and this one talks about 110,000 acres so extend the program to all the regions and get all the districts to 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 get involved so the benefits can get to the people when i was in maoli school we had a school farm and this was in in the 80s this is mid 90s i left maoli school 95 upper six and i was the dining hall prefect i was the medicine prefect we had a pigree so every weekend we took pork it was such it was such an occasion for students it came from our school farm so even the, the concept of school farm is also dead we've just we've just spoken about milo games sports and all that concept of school farm it's dead we used to work on school farm in fact sometimes when you want to punish your genius you take them to the school farm to go and weed yeah. so you get maize you get beans you get cassava you get yam and then we have the we have the animal husbandry that's the livestock section we rear fowl we rear pigs and 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 that so these are things we could do conveniently now my final point will be that we should be able to measure how what benefits for instance fertilizer is bringing to our people because the fertilizers are being diverted you see the chemicals the vaccines people divert them when the chemical is acquired government has listed a whole lot of tonnage and amount expended on on buying chemicals to fight army worms you recall that the army worms are sometimes two weeks after spraying they come back they destroy the maize crops so we need to the, the monitoring and evaluation department of our ministries should be up and doing so that when some of these products are sent to our, supposedly to our farmers they can go and monitor and see that the farmers are having the direct benefit in fact indeed if those that actually get to them mm -hmm. so for me the figures don't support the the, the fact that there is the, the there is some performance there is some performance right so to the extent that it leads to about seven point something eight point four percent no i think so it's from seven point four to eight point four why are they, not, the why are they not talking about 2022 the 2022 figure is about eight point five okay yes I'll, the 2022 I'll figure is dipped to about eight point four by four point uh, four point five Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, verify the, 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 the ranking member indicated it yesterday. 4.5, yes, so from 8.4 to 4.5. Yes, 2022 figure. Agree, go for it. I'll check with the ministry now before before we end this. Okay. So, um, let me come to you, Nana. Um, figures here.
shows that Agric is performing. Tomorrow is Farmers' Day, planting for food in jobs. Oh, but, um, what I wanted to add is that mm -hmm. we should stop giving the farmers vehicles and homes and all. Allow, give the farmer the resource, that is money, to plow back, to expand. Last year in Southern, we gave the farmer, and then we gave him a tricycle and some, some items. But he came to me and said quietly that if he had been given cash, he would have been able to expand, maybe double the size of the farm. And I think that it made sense. So we need to gauge what the farmers really need because they need money to be able to buy the implement. One fertilizer is about 500 Ghana now. You know, so we need to evaluate the prices that we are giving to the farmers as the awards for doing well for the season. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much.